every blow counts. Every blow directed to the exact spot. No swing wasted and no lost motion. This is the creed of a good axeman. Natural swing. Working steadily with enough force to do the job. Good timing and body coordination. The important and essential prerequisites of good axemanship. Let's repeat these codes. The axeman strikes where he looks. Is it possible with this axe handle? Or with an axe on which the blade is ready to fly off? No lost motion. A good axe man makes every blow count. But with this axe blade, why every blow is just lost motion? A defective axe can be as much responsible for injuries as one misused. Select a good axe. The handle must be straight and from durable wood, like hickory or white ash. It must be properly fitted, tightly wedged and cut off even at the head. And even with the eye. A loose blade makes a dangerous axe. The handle must be smooth and slightly flexible. It should fit the hands for obvious reasons. For example, when chopping right-handed, the left hand grips the end of the handle while the right hand travels up and down, guiding the blow. This action prevents shock to arms and shoulders, chopping from either side. Use your natural swing for chopping, whether right or left-handed. Perfect your normal axe swing until you acquire accurate chopping control. Axemen who can chop from either side have had years of practice. That is why chopping is an art in itself, based on good judgment and safety codes which are not violated. Not so long ago, a woodsman skilled with the axe occupied a special pedestal in Wood's work. He was often envied by his fellow workmen. Yet the road to becoming a successful axe man was never paved with secrets. Felling a tree this size would take just a few minutes. It would take a little longer, perhaps, if the tree lean is not evident. A straight axe handle held vertically will reveal the lean. Also, if density and weight of limbs influence the direction of fall. After the workman has fully decided on direction for the fall, he removes all obstructions which may interfere with chopping. Remember, the axe swing covers a wide area. The double-bitted axe has a thick blade for rough work and a thin blade for chopping, such as this. A sharp and clean, thin blade must be used to illustrate the pattern of chopping, which will be shown many times in this picture. Now, this pattern is not difficult to follow. The first notch is only the base for a larger undercut. Chips from the larger notch are removed more easily when one end is free. The skilled axeman plans the undercut in advance. He follows a mental blueprint of the pattern until the entire felling job is completed. The top and bottom cuts will be clean and straight. The corners trimmed to a proper angle, with all wood removed so the tree will break free from the stump when it falls. The finished job indicates the quality of axemanship. By adding a larger notch, this chopping pattern could continue indefinitely for larger undercuts. Chips are removed by the axe more readily when using this method, even in tough wood such as this. What the axe does not clean out, remove by hand. A glancing blow is avoided this way. Use caution regardless of what cutting pattern is used. Now comes the back cut. It should be chopped opposite and a few inches higher than the undercut. The pattern and axe work remain the same as prescribed until the back cut nears the undercut. Then, exercising a woodsman's caution, the axe call timber as long and proudly as any timber faller and give the tree a wide berth when it falls, the least respect due any tree. The same prescription for chopping is also followed, cutting logs in two. The measurement of one axe blade for the notch is approximately the log's diameter. 
A log this size or larger should also be notched on top for a solid footing. Because a skilled axe man will stand on the log while chopping it off, providing it is stationary for good balance. Chopping in this position is difficult and recommended only for experts. Again, the cutting procedure reveals a familiar pattern. The first notch becomes the side cut for the larger one. Also in tough wood when the axe is apt to stick, all blows become overlapping cuts to keep the axe blade from binding. Here is the action in slow motion. The proposed blows from the axe are spaced so that all cuts overlap. Therefore, the axe shouldn't stick when a corner of the blade is free in the previous cut. Now let's illustrate by chopping. The action will probably provide a better idea of the chopping pattern. The line for overlapping cuts is followed by direct hits from the axe blade, which requires accurate marksmanship and axe control. Loose chips should come out. The axe man should keep the target clean throughout free from any obstructions which may cause a glancing blow. The ability to place blows accurately is one of the many skills of the expert axeman. One half of the log is in two. The back cut must now be centered to meet the cut on the other side. The beginner will soon learn that this type of axe work is interesting after he has acquired necessary experience in precise chopping. Men are not born skilled axemen. And so it goes. The job is nearly completed. Small notches become larger cuts by expert axe work until the axeman steps to one side and severs the log, selecting the safest log end to stand on. And the job is completed. Now let's review the primary points so far. How to select the axe and how to hold the handle have been shown. Also the use of a natural and normal swing. A chopping pattern has been suggested. A simple but effective method for axe work which should eliminate the aimless and dangerous practice of chewing down trees. The purpose of this picture is to show a correct procedure practiced by lumberjacks for generations. Also for cutting logs in two. It is not a complicated pattern to follow. The prescription calls for accurate and sustained axe work, which can be accomplished with a reasonable amount of practice. It is a blueprint for the novice who has not been trained to follow a correct method for chopping. Overlapping cuts have been shown to keep the axe from sticking. The action may indicate precise chopping by a highly trained and effective axe man, but it provides standards for beginners to shoot at. It should stimulate a desire for good work. The use of the axe handle to determine the direction of lean was illustrated. Although rarely necessary, it shows how it can be done whenever there is any doubt. Usually the tree lean is quite noticeable. Estimating the size of the proposed cut using an axe blade was another point brought out. For example, if less than two axe blades in diameter, the height of the notch is one axe blade or half the diameter. Beginners, along with a large majority of axe men, should stand on the ground for safe chopping. Experts are even more cautious, but measure the proposed cut like experts do one blade wide, which is approximately the diameter of this log. Chop at a 45 degree angle while keeping an eye on the target. Be as accurate as possible. A good looking notch to start with is deep and both angle cuts are cleanly trimmed. Now is the time to start the larger notch. See how easily the chips come out. Just placing the blows right, that's all. Striking where each cut will do good. Reminds one of splitting wood. The wood pile started many beginners in the business, but too often at the expense of axe handles. This is also accurate work. Mark the proposed cuts on the block before delivering the blows. 
This is a more effective method. And on the final blow, flip the axe as it strikes. It springs the cut open. The axe flips require real split-second timing, but it springs the cut apart and prevents the axe from going on into the ground. It is a useful blow to know. Splitting wood in this manner is a common menace and is not recommended. A man's fingers are too valuable. Start chopping more sensibly by putting the block on a log. It calls for accurate chopping too. And the axeman can retain all his fingers. It is probably the first lesson in careful chopping, especially for cutting kindling when it is necessary to chop against a small target. The axe knowledge learned at the wood pile aided in limbing trees to direct blows away from legs and feet and to be careful with the axe when climbing over logs. New safety rules are practiced for protection of the axe man. Chop off the branches with the log between you and the limb being chopped. This is a good rule to follow. The tree log provides protection against many glancing blows from the axe. It makes no difference on which side the axe man works, this protection should be considered when planning the job. Every branch is a definite target, but do not exert too much force behind the axe blow, as it may take several cuts to remove the limb. But have a firm grip on the axe while doing the job. Measure the chopping distance when in doubt, especially for limbs located under the tree. Correct chopping distance is important. But the ultimate perfection in axe control is reached when chopping small trees and bushes with the upward swing. This is a long step in timing and chopping acquired at the wood pile. When cutting small bushes, practice to cut with a swing that brings the axe blade up as it connects with the bush. The lower arc of the swing should travel away from the ground, away from rocks, to keep the axe sharp. This is considered exceptionally good control as it keeps the axe out of the ground. The difference is a sharp or a dull axe blade. All the safety features illustrated are applicable for advanced chopping. They are the basic principles for a sane and safe axe work for any chopping job. Standing on the ground for solid footing, for accuracy, is most important for this kind of work. Although the same pattern is followed, a larger notch this time will angle through and will be large enough to separate the log. The axe man should work at one side of the cut, however, to avoid the axe blade and events the last blows penetrate through the wood too easily. This is another good rule in axemanship. The one-way cut can also be completed with a few back blows. These side swings must be delivered away from the legs and feet and timed accurately. Exercise extreme care whenever the log rebounds against the swing. The man who adheres strictly to safety codes of the woods is usually one using a sharp axe, and he keeps it in good condition on the job. With the axe at this angle and the filer wearing gloves for protection, the blade is sharpened with the ordinary file fitted with a handle. When one side is finished, the blade is turned around by chopping the axe into the stump in the opposite direction. The other side of the blade is now exposed to the filer. Filing in this manner is less apt to cause hand injuries. Use light pressure and roll the bevel to the edge on the forward stroke and lift the file on the back action. A smooth, tapering bit is desirable. Work out the rough surfaces caused by filing with a hand stone. Use a circular motion which extends over the edge of the bit. This conditioning job takes only a few minutes, and a sharp axe means all the difference in effective chopping. A sharp blade is respected. Use the smooth side of the stone for the final touches on the bit, and test the cutting edge on wood. Careless handling invites trouble. 
For example, don't swing the axe unless the widest arc of the swing is clear of brush, trees, and other obstructions. Low tree branches may interfere with chopping. Trim them off. Although all safety rules cannot be shown, some are too important to be passed over lightly. For example, pass the axe in this manner, with a handle to the receiver. Or like you would pass a sharp knife, like this, with a handle first. Always carry the axe at your side, holding the handle right behind the axe blade. Carry it on the downhill side when traveling. It will clear the body more easily in the event of a fall. Better still, put sheaths on the blade. Use rubberized belting or hose over each bit, held on by a strong rubber band. It is quickly put on, and the cover ensures full protection. Axemen traveling through the woods or walking some distance on the trail to and from work should keep the axe blade covered for their own protection. This rule cannot be stressed or repeated too often in programs for job training. Stand the axe against a log. Here it can be seen and won't get lost. Or, like this, against a stump. Some axemen prefer the base of a tree. These are a few suggestions easily overlooked. Experienced axemen everywhere, men who take certain pride in their work, do not overlook these safety rules. Appearing relaxed and unhurried, they make chopping seem easy, but they still get the job done. At the same time, they watch out for their own and the other fellow's safety. Plan the job carefully. Test for accurate chopping distance and secure a good footing before starting the undercut and be sure the axe swing is clear of all obstructions. Accurate chopping requires a smooth but a natural swing with the axe. Hit the target with a swing which is natural and produces the best results. Warn others an ample time before the tree falls. Call timber. Use caution instead of being sorry. And when the tree goes, retreat a safe distance while watching for falling limbs. Remember, the back cut should be a few inches above the undercut, leaving enough uncut wood between to guide the fall. The chopping pattern for advanced axe work introduced in this picture for beginners is one of several ways to cut trees and logs in two which were handed down by several generations of lumberjacks. The pattern is not difficult to follow, providing the beginner follows the chopping examples and rules illustrated in this picture. For that matter, any advanced chopping becomes more critical chopping. All methods will challenge your safety judgment and place a price tag on your ability. Any chopping pattern is better than the aimless and often dangerous methods now practiced by most beginners in the business. This picture should stimulate interest in a definite procedure, but always remember this. Although you selected a good axe, which is properly fitted and perfect for good chopping, you are judged by how you handle the axe and how you use the axe on the job. This counts. If you do your best and follow the rules of good axemanship, follow the safety codes, you will succeed. That's the Axeman's Creed.